City Clerk to call the roll. Mayor Sorrell? Here. Assistant Mayor Hanson? Here. Councilor Grasso? Here. Councilor Lowne? Here. Councilor Hines? Here. Councilor Penelakis? Here. Councilor Whitehouse? Here. Councilor Marconi? Here. Councilor St. Laurent? Here. I'd like to ask everyone to rise for a moment of silent prayer, and then Councilor Marconi will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, ending by God Bless America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless America. Now we're down to uh, the uh, proclamation, Read Across America, and I think uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Susan's here tonight. <laughs> Looks just like
like him. Let's see, how old is he now? A hundred years old? Ninety-nine. Boy, I was close. <laughs> a proclamation. Whereas, read across America a national celebration of Dr. Seuss's birthday on March 6, 2003, promotes reading and adult involvement in the education of our community students. And whereas, the city of Portsmouth will participate in the Reading Cross America initiative that is sponsored nationwide by the National Education Association and supported locally by the Portsmouth School Department and the Association of Portsmouth Teachers. And whereas, reading aloud to children piques their interest and stimulates their emotional development and imagination. And whereas, children model their behavior and their attitude after the significant adults in their lives, including their parents, grandparents, teachers, friends, neighbors, and other members of their community. Whereas, the citizens of Portsmouth consider children their greatest asset and hope for the future and stand firmly committed to promoting reading as a catalyst for our students' future academic success, their preparation for American jobs of the future, and their ability to compete in a global economy. Now, therefore, I, Evelyn Sorrell, Mayor of the City of Portsmouth, join with all of the members of the City Council in inviting and encouraging all citizens and employees of the city to set aside time on March 6, 2003 to demonstrate reading for their own enjoyment and to read to our young citizens and hereby proclaim Thursday, March 6, 2003 as Read Across Portsmouth Day, given with my hand and the seal of the City of Portsmouth on this third day of March, 2003, Evelyn Sorrell Mayor. And I'd like to say that I'm going to be on it. I'm going to have a kindergarten up into the Mayor's office, and we will be reading together. And I really look forward to this every year. I love the kids. Uh, Diane, if you'd come forward and accept this and say a few words. Uh, and Dr. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to introduce Kelly Pilgrim, who is our cat in the hat tonight, and she is the elementary librarian for all the elementary schools. Good evening, my name is Diane O'Leary McGee. I live at 303 O'Leary Place in Portsmouth. I'm the president of the Association of Portsmouth Teachers, and I am here tonight with an invitation for all of you to come and read across America at the Fox Run Mall at, from 4.30 to 6.30. I also invite you to come to a school and read to our students. All the students in the system will be reading or having someone read to them from 10 o'clock to 10.30 a.m. and at various times throughout the day. Read Across America, like the mayor said, is a project of the National Association, uh, Education Association and is the largest literary event in the country. It focuses the country's attention on how important it is to motivate children to read. Last year, 45 million students participated from all 50 states. The national co-chair persons this year are Ning Na, who appear on ER, and Asai Morales, who appear on NYPD Blue. We are fortunate to have two celebrities with such diverse backgrounds be this year's spokesperson. I would like to thank Mayor Sorrell, City Manager Bohenko, the City Council, Steve Parkinson, Dr. Tracy, Dr. Lister, the Portsmouth School Board, Angie Manning Welch, Diane Law, the Association of Portsmouth Teachers, Barnes and Noble's Bookstore, and the Citizens of Portsmouth for the fantastic party we had last year. We are hopeful that this year's celebrations will be bigger and better. There will be a Read Across America celebration also at Barnes & Noble Bookstore at the same time. We are having two celebrations this year to alleviate crowding, and we hope that everybody will be able to come to either one. 
Now as a quick aside, I hope with me you will abide. I brought with me a cat and hat with gifts for you, and you'll like that. To thank you for all your support, and now to end my Seuss report. Theodore S. Geisel was Dr. Seuss, you see. We'll celebrate his birthday, 99 he would be. Though born in Massachusetts, he got his degree in New Hampshire at Dartmouth, just between you and me. In 1954, Life released a report. It said children were not reading in short. Children not reading? How can that be? I'll do something. It's up to me. So Seuss went to work using words 220. Nine months later, 220 words was plenty. The Cat in the Hat was a great big hit. So you might think that that was it. Bennett Surf in 1960 made him a bet. Now only 50 words could he use. All set? I'll bet you remember, not Sam I am, but the greatest book, Green Eggs and Ham. So to finish my dedication to Seuss, Lorax, Grinch, and Fidwick the Moose, reading is great. Try it, you'll see. At Fox One Mall, you'll just have to be. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Now I am going to ask Councillor Pandalakis to read a proclamation that was given by the mayor uh, yesterday down at Edgewood, and it's for Juanita Bell, who is a former school teacher in little, um, the kindergarten class, and then after she retired, she went on to be a state representative. Uh, Laura? Whereas Juanita Bell is celebrating her 80th birthday, having been born on February 26, 1923, and whereas, although she grew up in Ohio, Juanita had made the city of Portsmouth her home for 48 years. And whereas Juanita has served our community in many, many ways, teaching kindergarten for most of the, more than a quarter of a century to children at the Farragut School and then at Little Harbor School. And whereas her teaching skills led her to be named Portsmouth Outstanding Educator of the Year in 1972 by the Junior Chamber of Commerce. And whereas, after retiring from teaching, Juanita continued her contributions to the city of Portsmouth by serving two terms in the New Hampshire legislature. And whereas her efforts on behalf of improving the status of black residents of, of New Hampshire are widely recognized and have been the subject of many awards over the years, and whereas these efforts include working on legislation to celebrate the legacy of Martin Luther King and serving as president of the Portsmouth NAACP. Now, therefore, I, Evelyn Sorrell, Mayor of the City of Portsmouth, on behalf of the Portsmouth City Council and all the citizens of Portsmouth, Congratulate Juanita Bell on the occasion of her 80th birthday and offer our very best wishes for a very joy joyous celebration for such a valued citizen of our city. Given with my hand in the seal of the city of Portsmouth on the first day of March, 2003, Evelyn Sorrell. Thank you, Laura. And I'd just like to state here and now, uh, Juanita Bell is one wonderful woman. She had the three of my boys, and she was such a fabulous teacher. Those kids used to come home, and they'd have all kinds of stories. And anybody that's down at Edgewood, just go in and say hi to her. I know she'd love some company. Thank you, Laura. Now we're down to the acceptance of the minutes of February 10th, 2003. So I'll move, Your Honor. Second. Any, uh, any questions on the minutes? All ready for the vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Now we're down to the public comment section, and we have just two people that are going to speak tonight. First one is uh, Peter Bresciano on the statewide property tax. Thank you, Madam Mayor, City Council members and staff. Uh, just a couple words on the statewide property ripoff. Uh, I imagine you all read the Portsmouth Herald, and we're receiving in the year 2008 $9,700,000 in education funding. K 
Can you imagine that? I am just overjoyed at, at the city of Portsmouth getting $9 million. Although probably by 2008, we have contributed probably 20 million. Uh, so I imagine what they're sending back to us is a, is a few dimes to put our educational system back together. And I just hope that uh, on March, I forget the date now, when the, when the school department presented their, presents their budget to the city council, I hope the governor and the legislature shows up to, sh to see just what they've done to our school system. And I won't even get into the fire and police. But do you remember back during the campaign, the gubernatorial campaign, when the hottest issue was the statewide property tax? I don't see anything being done about it. Sent a letter to the governor saying, you've been in office now for three months. We need to see something happen. You can't wait till 2008 for something to happen to the statewide property tax as it, in, as it involves Portsmouth. The taxpayers need relief now. They, they needed relief yesterday. We get so tired of paying somebody's, somebody else's taxes. And if the governor doesn't think that communities are pitted against communities and citizens are pitted against citizens, then he's got another thing coming. He's wearing blinders. Uh, I just want to say one thing about the coalition's um, proposition. Uh, I still have second thoughts. So I, I'm still concerned about having the uh, constitutional amendment in that particular proposal. I think if it ever gets to the citizens of New Hampshire, we're going to see what happens because over three quarters of this state are being paid off by the few of us cities and towns that are footing the bill. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. The next and final speaker is Nancy Brown, and she's going to speak regarding a city, city resolution. Good evening, um, Madam Mayor Sorrell and city council members and officials. As a lead to Morgan and myself, Nancy Brown, are here um, at this moment to present to you a request that we're asking that you would um, sign a peace resolution. Um, and this is, let me just read this to you very quickly and we'll leave the information behind. Honorable Mayor Sorrell and city councilors, as concerned citizens and residents of Portsmouth, we most respectfully present and petition the mayor and members of the Portsmouth City Council to pass a resolution expressing opposition to the United States military action in Iraq. We agree with the statement of the New Hampshire Council of Churches and many other citizens groups, organizations, and city councils throughout the United States that a preemptive, preemptive unilateral use of force against Iraq is not justifiable. We believe the use of military force to remove the current government of Iraq could have incalculable consequences for the Middle East, in particular for the Iraqi civilization that has already suffered so much from war, oppression, and debilitating embargo. Therefore, as our elected city officials, we ask you to have the strength and courage to support the following resolution opposing the United States proposal to attack, attack Iraq. We ask that you consider the wishes of the many people of the world and the dictates of the highest level of conscience and work for peace and diplomacy instead of war. And Zalita and I um, are representatives of a coalition of at least 50 people of Portsmouth concerned citizens who will all be glad to come and speak if, um, if that's what we need to do. And the resolution is very simple um, <clears throat> after having worked on it for quite a bit. 
uh, resolution opposing the United States proposal to attack Iraq, whereas war causes untold suffering, death, destruction to infrastructure and the environment, now including endless radioactivity from depleted uranium munitions affecting soldiers and local community people, whereas international law does not support a preemptive attack, whereas there is no convincing evidence that the outcome of such a war would be better than waging war, whereas there is considerable evidence that attacking Iraq will dangerously destabilize the Middle East, whereas there is considerable evidence <coughs> whereas a first strike by the United States uh, could lower the threshold of wars between other countries, such as between India and Pakistan, whereas such action would likely unleash retaliation against the U.S. and nurture the seeds for terrorism internationally, whereas such a war will cost many billions of dollars when the U.S. is already burdened with deficit spending and reductions to much-needed services at the federal and state level, and whereas today we are at a crucial point of imbalance in this world and are moving towards what may be the beginning of a third world war and in an effort to help avoid a tragic world event we are asking you and that you would sign this we the undersigned members of the Portsmouth City Council oppose attacking Iraq and urge the United States to resolve this conflict through diplomatic efforts and the United Nations Thank you. We're going to leave. Right, we're going to leave copies mm -hmm. with you. Very Thank good. you very much. And please let us know if you need us for anything. Thank you. Now we're down to the approval of grants and donations. The first one is Seacoast Ticket Agency, who has donated $1,000 to the Portsmouth Police Honor Guard. What's your wish, Councilors? Move to approve and accept the donation to the Portsmouth Police Department as listed. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Uh, the next one is the acceptance of a grant and request for authorization of memorandum of agreement between the Portsmouth Public Library and the work, Workforce uh, Opportunity Council. John, maybe you could tell the council a little bit. Sure. Basically, this is a, a grant for software for the, uh, the public library, and essentially what it does is allows people that are um, sight impaired uh, to be able to go online and actually hear what is online. So for example, we'll go online to the City of Portsmouth webpage and we'll see what's there. Through this software and through the equipment we have at the library, what will happen is people can log on, go on the internet, and actually will hear what's in front of them. Very good, thank you. Uh, who would like to make the motion? John Hines? Uh, I move the that question uh, in favor of it. Good. Do I get a second? Second. second. Uh, uh, discussion? Yes. Uh, Bill St. Laurent and then uh, Brad. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I agree with, with what's happening here, but why do we have to go into an agreement? Uh, why can't it just be? That's the requirement they've set forward. We can. Certainly, the agreement, and I, Bob has reviewed it, I don't think there's anything that would be uh, really a serious problem if we ever wanted to just remove ourselves from this situation. The, the value of the software is about $1,200, and they maintain the software, so I suppose we could always give the software back, right, Bob? Um, the agreement can be terminated at any time that the city wants to get out of it. Uh, under seven, I, I'm not quite sure. Is that the statement that's made under seven under the general terms. What, I, I'm not, I don't quite understand that. I think that's right. I frankly am not aware of what type of reports or data would be generated by the library either. But uh, I mean, I would assume that there might be reports uh, on usage of it. Okay, I just. I just I don't see why we have to get into a 
contractual thing, but I, if that's their requirement. Uh, All done? Yes. Uh, Brad and then John Hines. Yeah, sh should I assume that the library trustees have reviewed this and approve of it and Sherm Pridham yes. uh, doesn't feel that it's a problem, it's no financial obligation to the city? No. Sherm is fine with it. Thank you. That's John? Uh, I think this would be uh, a real plus for the city of Portsmouth that has been recognized as the e-commerce city of this uh, wide area. Uh, and given the uh, somewhat of an opposition from a former Chamber of Commerce leader that is currently in another city of uh, New Hampshire uh, who is trying to uh, somewhat downgrade the economics of the city uh, and hopefully to build their own, which is somewhat in need of support. So I think that this would uh, show uh, New Hampshire and the country that Portsmouth is leading the, the technolo technological uh, growth of this state. Thank you, John. Uh, Joanne, did you have your hand up? No. No, okay. Any, uh, Abby? Uh, number three, Your Honor, public meaning, New Hampshire Public Library site shall provide at its own expense all personal, personnel necessary to perform its responsibilities. I hope that they have enough people on hand that they're not going to hire anybody. Oh, no. This is really basically to show somebody how to use it, like we would show. I, I know, but uh, sometimes it also involves bringing in somebody else. No, that, that's not the case. You show up? I can assure you that we're not going to hire anybody. No, I would just like it on the record. Thank you can have it on the record, uh, <laughs> Councilor, that we will not hire anybody for this particular uh, activity. And Kelly just put it on the record, Evelyn. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, any other discussion? All ready for the vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Now we're down to uh, presentations and considerations of written communications and petitions. A letter from Amy Hamill, Holy Family Hospital Cancer Management Center, requesting permission to hold the Sports for Life Bike Tour on Saturday, May 17, 2003. Yeah. What you wish, yeah. yes, Councilor. I move that we um, send this to the city manager with power. Second. Second. All right. Discussion, Harold? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, by the communication I see, there's a, it's going to be a, at least 250 to 300 bikes uh, passing through this city, coming up Route 1A. Now, I think the city manager should notify uh, Ms. Hamill that uh, going across Sagamore Bridge over up Sagamore Avenue, they have to walk the bikes across because she's, from her communication, she's not familiar with the city and with the entrance. Uh, coming into the city on Route 1A, so. Good point. Okay, I'll okay. no, no, okay. put that in. Good, good, good idea. All ready for the vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? A letter from Barbara Masia, uh, Pro Portsmouth, Inc., requesting permission to hold the 13th annual Children's Day on Sunday, May 4th, 2003, and the 26th annual Market Square Day on Saturday, June 14, 2003. What did you wish? Move the city manager with power. Second. Discussion. Uh, Bill? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I, I would vote for this under the stipulation that all costs would come up, come from them. In other words, the city would incur no costs and either police or clean up or whatever for either one of these days. Okay. Carol? Yes, uh, here again. Looking at my calendar, this is going to be a very busy day, uh, May 4th, Children's Day, because already scheduled, uh, there's a bike tour through the city, and also there's an AIDS walk through the city at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So adding the Children's Day, with the blocking off probably one street or two streets downtown, uh, it's going to be a very busy Sunday afternoon. Any other discussion? I think that's wonderful. I hope it is. Uh, well, you're not gray-headed, so we're all set. <laughs> uh, any other discussion? You all ready for the vote? I'm awful. I'm feisty tonight, I guess. <laughs> uh, 
All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Now we're down to the renewal request for sidewalk obstruction licenses. And I'm going to, whoever wants to m make the motion, I'm going to let them read that long list. And I think we could basket those all together. And then the ones further down, the new ones. Yes. Who would like to do it? And Harold? Your Honor, I move that we uh, basket all these uh, proposals together. These are all renewals. And so I'm going to repeat them. Very Second. Second. Starbucks coffee, four tables, eight chairs. Cafe Medit um, Mediterranean, one A-frame sign. Prudential Rust Realty, one A-frame sign. I Look Optical, one A-frame sign. Cafe Brioche, 15 tables and 42 chairs. Choosy Shoes, one bench, one A-frame sign. Serendipity, two A-frame signs. Gas, Portsmouth Gaslight, one A-frame sign. Beeper Exchange, one A-frame sign. Portsmouth Brewery, one A-frame sign. Ambrosia. Ambrosia Gardens, Ambrosia Gardens, Inc., one A-frame sign. Portsmouth Anthony, one A-frame sign. Very good. Uh, discussion? Second. That's fine. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. I didn't get a second. Uh, any discussion? No discussion? Already? You all ready for the vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. There's a letter from uh, Christine. Okay. Rulo. Right. The Children's Museum of Portsmouth requesting permission to hold the annual 5K road race and kids fun run on Saturday, May 3rd, 2003. So moved to the, with the city manager with power your Second. Second. Very good. <laughs> all right. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Now we're down to a request for a sidewalk obstruction license for the following businesses. Now, whoever wants to do that, you can read it. Now, this, uh, the Portsmouth gas lights, a new one attached. Anyone want to take that on? Your Honor, I'll continue. May I? All right. Your Honor, these are new requests for sidewalk obstruction licenses, and they are at the following. South Street and Vine, LLC, two tables and four chairs. Portsmouth Gaslight Company, one additional A-frame sign. Second. Uh, discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Now we are down to um, a letter from Karen and Ernest Johnson regarding the city budget. And I would like one of the counselors to read that letter. Joanne? Yes, Your Honor. Please. Um, dear Mayor and Portsmouth City Council members, Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to express my concerns and views on the upcoming budget preparation. As a homeowner and resident of Portsmouth, I'd like to make my thoughts known to you. Over the past 12 years, my husband and I have seen our taxes increase from 2400 to 5000 to over $5,000. We recognize that Portsmouth overall is a wonderful place to live. I wouldn't say, though, that it's mainly the services the city provides that makes us want to continue living here. <clears throat> Most large-sized towns have road crews, fire and police departments, schools, and city halls. What stands out about Portsmouth for us is the parks, the variety of businesses, the presence of the arts, and the amenities like the city pool. Mostly, though, it's the variety of people who live and work here. Like a lot of people, our income has dramatically decreased, even though the cost of living has increased. By reordering priorities and doing without some things that really aren't essential, but that we'd easily gotten used to, we've been able to keep paying our mortgage, taxes, and all those other essential bills. To put it bluntly, what I expect of our city officials and employees is that they be able to do basically the same and their situation shouldn't be quite as difficult to work out as a zero increase in budget isn't the same as a decrease in funding. My husband and I love living here, but we're quite prepared to do with fewer amenities, especially when it comes to trimming city services 
that were created for and benefit mainly the city employees. It will take a strong backbone to do that, but it can and should be done. Please have this read at the next council meeting. I sincerely, Karen and Ernest Johnson. Thank you. Do I have a second on that? Do second. I have a second? I, one. One. I, no I move that we oh. accept the letter and place it on All right. Thank you, Julian. Okay. Second. But I'd also like to, to make a, uh, have a copy of this letter sent to all the heads of the departments so that they can get some ideas. If, they, if they're not aware, this is what's happening in the city. This is a good example of what's happening in the city. Wow. What is happening in the city, Bill? It's a tight budget. People are, uh, oh, okay. 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 And that each department gets a copy of this just to let uh, them see what we're getting. I think they're all working. I think they were all working very hard, aren't they, John? Well, all the budgets are in, and we're in the process of uh, reviewing them. They've all come in at the, uh, the re uh, requested amount to the City Council. The City Council will be doing their work sessions, but I can provide the major department heads. You don't want... No, no, just the major. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Council Marconi? Could we ask the City Manager how much we spent on snow this winter? <laughs> just to throw it in for what it's worth. Uh, no. <laughs> Since you asked, I will tell you. Um, Thank you. As of right now, we spent $409,000. Say it loud. Uh, $409,000. And we budgeted, John? Uh, $259,000. So our contingency, is it an all-time low or is it zero? <laughs> well, t in, in a few minutes, you get the vote on that. <laughs> A little bit, John. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> yes, I would just okay. like to make the comment that a zero increase in the budget is a decrease in funding, because we have to take in all the increases that have come about for uh, lights, fuel, yeah. heat, um, everything else that's gone up. Gas, gasoline must, is certainly going to be hit for city vehicles. So I, I wanted to clarify that for the uh, writers of the letter. Okay, very good. We all ready for the vote? Uh, yeah. Harold? Clarify the motion, would you please? How many copies will be going out to heads? I mean, uh, uh, that's not in the motion. Yeah. That's all. That's, that's all. not in the motion. The motion is yeah. the motion is to accept and place on file. Well, also, this was a request. That was a request. Uh, uh, motion. Okay. Request. Well, that's part of the motion. All right. We'll take care of it. Just wrote it down. All right. All right. Uh, we all ready for the vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Now we're down to the city manager, and John has three items that require action. Well, uh, Your Honor, the first item deals with uh, what Councillor Marconi just talked about, the question of use of, uh, of FYO2 and FYO3 contingency funds for snow operations. As I just indicated, the city has expended to date uh, $409,000 uh, on uh, snow removal. Uh, as you recall, uh, you did provide an additional $100,000 from the FYO2 contingency to the $559,000 that was originally funded in our FO, FYO3 snow removal budget. Uh, what this means basically is if you don't act tonight, we have overextended the budget by $49,500. What I'm asking the City Council for tonight is that we, um, we, uh, we, uh, uh, you allow me to spend the remaining $37,000 in the fiscal year 02 contingency, and then you allow me to spend $50,000 from the fiscal 03 contingency for a total $87,000. What that would mean is, as of today, if you approve that, I would have a balance of $37,400 available for snow removal. What I would say is if we I should probably not, I should probably qualify this if we get a blizzard, but if we, if what I'll try to do is make it up from within the existing, if I get approval tonight, I'll make, I'll try to make up from the existing uh, budgets any overage after that. Um, and uh, with the qualification, if we get uh, like the blizzard of 78, I may have to come back to you, but uh, we'll make every effort to try to do it within the existing budget if we get this tonight. Uh, Alec, you wanted to make the motion on that? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move to authorize the city manager to expend $37,000 from the fiscal year 02 contingency and up to $50,000 from physical, uh, fiscal year 03 contingency for snow removal operations. Second. Do I have a second? Second. 
Evelyn, you had your hand up. I was going to make the motion. Oh, That's I'm okay. sorry. That's all right. Uh, you wrong? Anybody? Yes, Councilor Grasso. Thank you. Um, Your Honor, I know that things have not been perfect, but I wanted to take this time to commend the Department of Public Works for the good job they've done in allowing all of us to get around, around and about. I know not every sidewalk that has been plowed that some people might wish to be plowed, and there are uh, things that everyone would wish, but I think all in all that they've done a remarkable job because inevitably these storms seem to start on a holiday or a weekend, which automatically just increases the cost 50% because it's overtime. So um, I, I'd like to pass on our my personal thank you to the um, crew for the good job. Well I done. think we should make it from the entire council. Agreed. I think everyone feels the same way there. No question about it. Uh, Councillor Marconi, and then Councillor Pandalakis, and then Councillor St. Laurent. I just wanted to uh, agree with uh, Councillor Grasso. Uh, I think they've done a wonderful job, and we can't always put a price tag on everything. We had several years when we didn't have any snow, and there was a little, there was an extra dollar that was going into the city's expenses because we didn't spend it on the snow. So this time it caught up with us. And I realize that it's expensive, but I think that the, the city workers did an excellent job. They were very dedicated. They were out all night long, like you say, on a holiday. And I think they ought to be commended. And uh, I think that anybody that complains really shouldn't complain because it wasn't justified. And uh, that's it. All right, Councilor Pandalakis. Yes, I'd just like to say that I had a nephew visit me this past week that had to walk on the up on some of the sidewalks and he was very pleased and asked me to send our men down there and see if we could do some work in his town. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Councillor uh, St. Laurent? Yes, uh, I second Councillor Grasso's uh, co uh, comments about the city and their work along with the fact that not just in re removing the snow, uh, we had a very cold winter and we've had very wet uh, freezing streets, which has caused a lot of ice problems, which we haven't had because they've been on the ball and keeping the streets dry. <clears throat> I would say I haven't seen a lot of black ice problems in the city of Portsmouth. So that, that itself commends them in making sure that our roads are clear in the morning when we get up and go to work. And they've done an excellent job. All we've got to do is pray that the Farmers' Alban Act is not going to be right. They're predicting three major storms this month. This is the last year you want to pray for a white Christmas. <laughs> uh, John? No, I was just going to take back what I said then. Yeah. Okay, very good. Uh, we all set for the vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. The, uh, thank you, Your Honor. The next item deals with the Memorial Bridge and Scott Avenue rehabilitation projects. Uh, as you are, as you can see from the memorandum, um, the New Hampshire Department of Transportation <coughs> has hired consultants to begin design of the uh, of the uh, project for the Memorial Bridge and Scott Avenue rehab. As part of the design process, uh, we've asked that uh, DOT look at. Um, including a means to have bicyclists cross the bridge without having to dismount. Uh, this is just to have them to look at the design. Uh, nothing more. Uh, it doesn't commit DOT or anybody to, to do this, but if we're going to be designing, if they're going to be designing it, we thought it would be something to look at and see what the cost would be. Um, the Seacoast Metropolitan Planning Organization has already uh, endorsed this uh, alternative for, for the preliminary design. And I'm requesting uh, the city council support so that I might be able to send a, a letter to DOT to ask them to evaluate the bicycle a access alternatives during their preliminary design of the Memorial Bridge and the Scott Avenue Rehabilitation Project. Uh, Brad? Uh, I move to authorize the manager to request that the New Hampshire DOT evaluate bicycle access alternatives during preliminary design of the Memorial Bridge and Scott Avenue Rehabilitation Project. Second. Second. Very good. Uh, Harold, Evie, and Bill. Just an informational question. Is there still a uh, New Hampshire Bridge Authority that handles the Memorial Bridge also? It's Maine, New Hampshire. It's a two, yeah. it's, a, okay, yeah. it's just like a five-member board, I believe. Okay. But they do take a Yeah, basically, since they share the cost. Yeah, all right. 
this is probably 80 percent funding from the Fed. Yeah. So. Okay. I thought it was standard procedure for everyone on a bicycle to walk a bridge. No. Are there any exceptions? <laughs> when they're designed appropriately, there's certain design criteria. So, for example, it would have to be so much clearance to get across. So, for example, the Sagamore Bridge, all the bridge, primarily most of the bridges we have in this city, you, have, you should be dismounting from your bicycle and crossing. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Go ahead, Bill. Uh, thank you, Ron. Uh, I, I guess Evelyn kind of asked the question, but does this this doesn't commit us to anything? But will it commit us to spending extra money? The, the, to the Memorial Bridge is a, a um, totally a state federal project. The uh, Scott Avenue Bridge is 80 percent federally funded, so it may have some slight increase in our local match for the Scott Avenue. But I'm not sure yet. We, we haven't evaluated right. the situation. If it's cost prohibitive, certainly the state will probably not do it. The, the assistant mayor has taken over the chair and recognizes the mayor. Uh, I, my husband, after he retired, worked on the uh, Memorial Bridge for almost 12 years. And he used to come home at night and be very, very upset about the bicycles. Either they had run into people that are walking across, or even uh, the uh, security men uh, that uh, lifted the gates were getting hit, and even Dick got hit. They just do not have, I, I don't know, I think we're going to be opening up a very dangerous president. I think we should make them walk across the bridge. If I might, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor. Yeah. Oh. Just, just one second. Uh, Councillor Hines is next. And uh, since I attended the meeting of the Metropolitan Planning Organization and had a part in the discussion of this issue, uh, and the planning organization did move to keep this issue open until we can discuss with the state DOT uh, whether or not there is more support available in the event that the bridge, uh, the bicycle path actually gets uh, in business because there are other issues like uh, one landowner who owns 130 acres where this bicycle path would have to pass over it uh, may be suing to block it, so it may not happen. However, the issue at this time is simply that we're going to be discussing, are discussing with the state DOT the potential for getting the state DOT to support uh, in the financial uh, end of uh, bringing that bicycle path over one half of Memorial Bridge and into our city property. City Manager? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Uh, this really is just to explore the alternatives, and this is the preliminary design stage. When we get to the completion of the preliminary design, uh, the DOT will probably have public hearing and talk about it. And so they will not move to the final design until there's public input. At this time, I think it would be useful to evaluate, you know, what the alternatives are. They may find that because of the cost and because of the historical ramifications of adjusting the bridge that they won't be able to do anything. They may have to maintain the, the, uh, this, the, the situation where you dismount. So, all we're asking is that we explore alternatives. This is not definitive as of yet. Are you ready for the question? Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? Opposed. Thank motion, you. motion carries. Thank you, Your Honor. The next item is request for approval of poll license. Uh, this has been approved by the, uh, uh, actually recommended for approval by the Public Works Department. It is on Hooley Drive. It's approximately 476 feet of four inch conduit cable and pedestals on Hooley Way. Move to approve the poll license agreement as recommended by the Public Works Department. Second. Okay. Discussion? Uh, Harold? Yeah, you know, many of these uh, poll licenses, I don't know why we, it comes before us. I guess it's a matter of uh, policy or uh, uh, part of the charter. But, you know, most of these things are uh, in place already. Uh, up there on Hooley Drive, it's a subdivision, six lot subdivision. The conduit has already been laid and the, uh, and the, uh, and the outlets are already in place. So, you know, that was done last spring. So I don't know why it comes before us now. Right? 
the authority to grant the, the license yeah. lies with the city council. Mm -hmm. I, I do agree with you that there's some issue about these things yeah. being installed before they come and that's get right. your license. Uh, so it's a matter of formality, I guess that's all. Well, that may not be a matter of formality. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that's a, a yeah. topic that the yeah. planning department probably yeah. should. Uh, Madam Mayor, if I may, we had this discussion a few years ago, and the only way we've been able to get rid of a lot of poles that have been abandoned was not issue it until the city council uh, yeah. Yeah. said, we're not going to give you another license until you take care of the old ones. And guess what? It worked. So we had a lot of them removed, and I just would be opposed to any reduction in the authority of the city council to continue licensing the poles. Your Honor, may I? Yeah. It's just the idea. They should have come before us as they were digging a trench and laying the conduit uh, in the spring of the year, or the fall of the year. That's when it was done. So that's all I'm saying. Okay. You are ready for the vote? Yeah. Was there a motion made on yeah. that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, are you all ready for the vote then? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you, Ryan. The next thing is I'd like to, uh, if I might, uh, have a, an opportunity to bring Dave Allen forward just to give a brief uh, discussion on uh, what was in the uh, newspaper. Uh, the other day uh, relative to uh, the city's water. I think it's important to, for the public to understand the, uh, that the water in Portsmouth is certainly safe to drink and that once you talk about the, uh, the issue, I think you'll understand better it's more of a, a regulatory issue that now has the uh, technology to, um, to measure certain levels that never were measured before in technology getting ahead of uh, our process. Thank you, John. Um, yes, as uh, I had sent a memo along and, and described what are referred to as the disinfection byproduct rules. And um, the process that we have that in our system, uh, we take water from the Bellamy Reservoir, we add some uh, a coagulant to it to let organic material settle out. It runs through filters, and then we chlorinate that water. And adding the chlorine takes care of any pathogens or uh, disease that may be in that water. Um, chlorine has been is considered one of the greatest health benefits of the, the 20th century in that it's it's gotten rid of uh, many diseases, waterborne type diseases that were prevalent um, prior to its use. Um, the downside is that when you add chlorine and there are organics in the water, there are it reacts with the organics in the water and creates these disinfection byproducts. Um, what's occurred is the, as the technologies and the science uh, increase, people uh, they've become they've, they've set lower and lower limits. Uh, just the ability to measure, um, we're, we're talking in parts per billion here that we're measuring these uh, disinfection byproducts, and um, the regulations have changed as of uh, effective the end of last year and that went from 100 parts per billion to 80 parts per billion. Um, we came, our average for the last year was 90 parts per billion. So had the regulations not dropped, we would have been in compliance with the, the previous years. Um, I went back and looked at some of the, for example, the, the end of 2001, we were, we were right at that 80. So our system is capable of of meeting those regulations, although it's, it's very difficult for us to meet it consistently under the technology that we're using right now. Um, one, of the, um, one of the things that we'll be coming forward to you with is our, our phase two master plan where we looked at the treatment plant and looked at some potential upgrades. But at, at this time, um, with, with what we have for treatment process, we're able to get right in that range, but we wouldn't be able to meet it consistently for the next 20 years. So we would be looking at making some improvements to the, to the treatment system. Um, as evidenced by the other communities that are dealing with this, Rochester, Summersworth, um, Salem, these communities that have the similar type of surface water system that have organics in it are experiencing the same thing. Essentially, the regulations are calling for tighter limits than the current or the old technologies that we have in place are capable of, of um, producing on a consistent basis. Again, this is an average, so we do have, you know, for the most part, our water is below those limits. There are times when it exceeds that, and that's when, when this average pulls it up over the 80 parts per billion. But uh, again, this is, this is a, the EPA, when they describe this as being a, an exceedance of that level, it's over an extremely long period of time that you would have some sort of health 
effect from this? Your Honor, just also to mention that about 60 percent of our water comes from the surface water and the other 40 percent comes from groundwater, which once you blend the two, you know, and they don't take that into consideration. So, That's right. you know, we may be diluted down below the 80 parts per billion as well, but there is no mechanism to determine that. Correct. Because we do blend our water. In, in the, the, the groundwater sources, we do not have, because you don't have the organic material in that, you, you typically don't find these, these types of disinfection byproducts in the groundwater sources, which is about half of our water. And you're taking a sample at specific spots where it is the surface water, and that's what, what brings these numbers up. Councilman I just thank you very much for your very specific report, but I think the bottom line is just tell the people that the water is safe. Mm -hmm. I think that's been the problem, is the, the press has sort of alluded to the fact that the, that the water isn't safe, and I know that's not true, and I know you know it's not true, but I think we have to make it known to the general public. Correct. The, the water is safe to drink. Obviously, if they hadn't changed the regulation, the water hasn't changed. This has been, disinfection byproducts have been in the water as long as we've been adding chlorine. It's really this, and, and this will improve the system over time um, as the, the technology catches up with, with what they're actually capable of measuring. You know, our water will meet those, those levels, but this is the same water we've been drinking for the last 50 years in Portsmouth, and it's, um, I drink it. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions of Dave? Thank you, Dave, very much. Thanks, Any other questions of John? Um, uh, information on... Hands up, John. Uh, Harold, yeah. Jusual, and then Bill. <laughs> well, there's a very important informational item that I think you should let the public know, and that is a brief letter from our senator in reference to the uh, McIntyre building, thanking the city for setting up a meeting. So I think it's only a half a page, John. But I have it right here, sir. Yeah, that, I think it's on the information or was yeah, that information. Information. Yeah, information. There it is. Yeah. 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 It's up to the mayor. Oh, here it is. I have it right here. Okay. Uh, if you're on it, you go right ahead, Johan. Uh, dear Mayor, just a quick note to thank you and City Manager John Bohanko for hosting last week's meeting at Portsmouth City Hall concerning the McIntyre Federal Building. The transfer of this facility and the relocation of the federal agencies to Pease represents a golden opportunity for the City of Portsmouth to redevelop 2.2 acres in the core of the historic downtown area. And I look forward to working with you and the community as the project evolves. Please feel free to contact me at any time as we move forward to advance this ambitious social and economic development initiative for the citizens of Portsmouth. With best wishes, uh, Judge Gregg, U.S. Senator. Thank you. Does that answer what you want? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bill? Uh, thank you, Ronna. It's I realize it's nothing to do with the council, but uh, we have a in our in our informational part of it is uh, there's going to be a opinion survey for the city of Portland being taken, and it's going to be done by the UNH. And I guess I would like to know what they're going to ask. If it's hot, not now, but I mean in the future when they're going to do things like that, the council could have some idea of what what is going to be asked. Sure. I mean, it really is going to, if I might, Your Honor, uh, it's really going to deal with the typical master plan issues about, um, you know, service, city services and those types of things, uh, what, what their thoughts are. Uh, certainly, if in the future you want to have uh, input onto those, uh, if it's possible, I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, sometimes these surveys get a little personal and get a little. No, we, we we've been very cognizant of that, and uh, there was one section of the survey that talked about income, and we we took that out. Okay. Thank you. Uh, that's I guess that's what I want to know. Thank mm -hmm. you. Very good. Any other questions of John before we go on to the mayor? Everybody's all set. Okay, John. Now we're down to the mayor, and I'm going to pass my gavel to uh, uh, Alec, with the hopes I'll get it back this year. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. <laughs> go ahead, Mayor. Uh, first of all, I have a donation from Claudia Munia. $81.12 donated for the new library building fund. Do I hear a second? Second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 Could I just, when, that, was that donation originally $100 to United Way and there was a 22% yes, right. uh, overhead cost? 
Yeah. Just want to. You read it right. I know it. I was kind of shocked. It just brought. It just brought to me that would charge the poor woman twenty two dollars and eighty eight cents to process one check, and she she thinks it's going to the library a hundred and four dollars, and the library gets eighty one dollars and twelve cents. I think United Way should tell the people when they give that payroll deduction how it is done. Thank you. Let me get that out of my head. Actually, I think you might be misreading that a little bit. I, I also contribute uh, a substantial amount through payroll deduction to the United Way. The 7% for uncollectible isn't really a fee. It's you say, okay, here's X number of dollars and how I want it spent, and then the employee leaves, and it works out in their numbers each year. They say, okay, 7% of these contributions just will never be made. So it really should be not called a fee. It's just 7% is never collected in the first place out of their total payroll contribution. So I agree with you. They've explained it very, very poorly. They cap it at the 15% on their admin fee. But the other 7% on the payroll just doesn't come in. If we all turned around here today and, bookkeeping. and said, okay, I'm going to put $20 per pay period in for the United Way, then chances are some employees aren't going to be there and they're gone. Even though they filled out their cards, they're going to make X number of dollars of contribution. Maybe they're in Ohio now or something like that. So it's just not explained well. And but that, the fact of the matter is that the woman gave $104 right. and she, the library received $81.12. $22.88 was kept by the United Way. And I don't, I never read that they did the process like that. But. Thank you, Agreed. Okay, you ready for the vote? All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. All opposed? Now we're, uh, now we're down to another check and uh, <clears throat> an acceptance of a donation from Northern Utility, Inc. for 2500 to Crossroads. Uh, Crossroads is working on uh, gathering money for a new furnace down there. So quite nicely, Northern Utility stepped forward with the donation. Um, I asked Chris uh, Sterndale to come in here and accept the check, but he didn't feel he wanted to, so he did come up to my office. You need a second on that? That's no, actually, there's no motion. It's made payable oh. directly. That, that's informational. Okay. It's made payable to uh, Crossroads, according to the check. Oh, right. Yep. right. And Madam Mayor, I'll turn this back over to you for the appointments. Is that correct? Thank you. Uh, now we're down to appointments, and the first one is a resignation uh, from Michael P. Uh, Pennington. Uh, this note is to inform you that I am resigning from the Portsmouth Public Library Board of Trustees. I am no longer a resident of Portsmouth. <clears throat> Excuse me. Unless my replacement is available soon, I am willing to serve until June 3rd, 30th, 2003. I have enjoyed my time as a trustee, and thank you for granting me the opportunity to serve. So that means we do have a vacancy there, but as I'm telling all the people, <clears throat> Excuse me. That are applying, uh, that uh, they have to come in and be interviewed uh, by the mayor and by the city, of, uh, by the assistant mayor. And if he's not available, John Bohinka will help me. I think it's time that we started being very, very fussy with who we're putting on our board. Move to accept the uh, resignation letter with regret and our deep appreciation for his service. Second. I will send a letter out to him, too. Thank you. Uh, now we have a consideration uh, for our... Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm sorry. You ready for the vote? Move the motion. We already did. You know, we already seconded. We're just waiting for a vote. <laughs> oh, we're all just waiting for a vote. Okay. All in favor. Aye. 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 About that. <laughs> all opposed. Okay. Now we're down to a consideration of the planning board alternate. 
and uh, the gentleman came in and was interviewed um, by the city manager and myself. Now, I want you people to know that I know how to pronounce his name. It's Jerry J. Haightmont. Monet, sorry. Haightmont. <laughs> I doubt that. But he was nice enough to send me a note and, and tell me just how to pronounce his name. And John, you were supposed to remember. But uh, it's just a consideration, but a very, very nice gentleman. Uh, now let's see. Uh, we have a consideration for the Portsmouth Housing Endowment uh, Fund Board, and that's Jeffrey Montjoy. And that is, uh, I want you people to look these over, and if you have any problems, uh, I want you to let me know. Okay, you'll have uh, the time until the next meeting. So if there's ever a question, I want you to call me up and come in and talk with me about it. The next one is a consideration on the Blue Ribbon Committee on Trees and Public Greenery. Now, as you all know, we, we've got a Blue Ribbon Committee, and uh, the first one under consideration is Richard G. Adams and I've enclosed his letter in there. And then another consideration uh, for the Blue Ribbon Committee on Trees and Greenery is Peter Lachlan. Is he new to the city, Your Honor? <laughs> <laughs> Shall we investigate his background? <laughs> uh, to be voted on tonight for the Conservation Commission is J. Lynn Walton. So move, Your Honor. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, to be voted on for the uh, peddler, Everett T. Eaton. So moved, Your Honor. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Now that takes care of that. Now, um, as you all know, the people that have businesses down on Market Street are getting nervous. They want us to have a meeting. And I told you that quite a few business people came to me uh, before they went to Florida and said they didn't want the, road, the street closed until they were here to talk about their end of it. So uh, they're all being back, they'll all be back before the end of April. Uh, so I was wondering if we could come up with a work session in April. Fine. Madam Mayor, I'd like to recommend that we do it earlier than later because you're going to have a whole lot of work sessions on budget coming up. The 14th? Uh, no, uh, you only got one in April. Haven't you, Joe? Yeah, yeah April, yeah, April. Well, the, the meetings that the City Council would have would be the 7th and the 21st for regular meetings. Right. Yeah. Oh, 14th. We have okay. April, just one in April, 14th. 14th. Right, yeah. And we have a school department budget April 28th. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Yeah, on. the 14th, what, what I can do is I can move the public hearing on the CIP up to the 31st of March. Okay? Okay. And because it really doesn't matter, uh, we'll, be, we'll have done the work session on the 24th of March, so we can have the public hearing on the 31st. Kelly, you can get it advertised, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we could probably hold it on April 14th. If you'd like. Isn't that a council meeting? That's yeah. regular council meeting. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, no, no, I'm, I'm wondering if separate yeah. meeting, okay. uh, because I, I think, think this is going to get a little feisty. Or, or we can do the 7th or the 21st. 7th or the 21st. Uh, the 21st, I think, is school vacation week. Yeah. Um, other than April that. 7th. Okay, with you, Madam Mayor. You know, the most of them said they'd be back to the end of April. Oh, okay. So uh, let's make it, uh, how about just... Uh, we get school department budget. Oh, school department budget? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, what else we got? Uh, how about a Tuesday night? Nothing wrong with Tuesday night. What about sometime after the 14th? Why don't, why don't uh, we turn this over to you to uh, set a date? How about if I bring that for March 17th? Okay. okay. All right. All right. So. All right. Yeah. Oh, no, I'll, I'll make a recommendation yeah. on March 17th on a date. This, this is going to be a work session. 
the people will be invited in just like we did for the bicycle race and everything else mm -hmm. around the round table and everybody can give their opinion. And uh, so that's what it's going to be. Okay. I'll, I'll, All right. I'll get together with the mayor and we'll see. Okay. 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 All right. Is that all right with all of you people? Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Uh, that takes care of the mayor. And then, uh, let's see, we're down to the assistant mayor. I don't know who he is, but I think his name is Alec <laughs> uh, Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I have the traffic and safety action sheets and minutes of February 20th, 2003, and move they be approved and accepted and placed on file. So moved. Second. Uh, Harold. Yes, so this, uh, goes up there. yes. Uh, this is a very important item. Number five, concerning uh, the granite crosswalks in Market Square, I, I wish the chairman of the traffic and safety would uh, comment just briefly on this. Uh, let's see, our public works director was here. Um, we've had a few people uh, take some headers off those granite, and he has indicated that he's able to put um, really uh, some kind of a stamping in the pavement that looks somewhat like granite and it's a lot cheaper than resetting the, the granite. He's reset them num numerous times and it's very, very expensive. And I believe that uh, he is going to be making a recommendation to the city manager to inform us at the, uh, at the yeah. traffic and safety. Just a comment. I realize the, uh, the heavy traffic and, and the frost in the ground is heaving these granite blocks and it's, they're very dangerous. I mean, they pull them out, they hot top them, they cement them back in, they don't last. But uh, by the same token, it's part of the design of Market Square, the same as the um, elevation of the sidewalk in front of the Anthemium, the same way as the granite columns were put in when they designed it downtown. Uh, Bob Thorison, uh came up with this design when he was city planner, and uh, it's a very important issue. So uh, I hope we um, converse with Bob Thorison on this before we make any drastic change. On I realize they're, they're a hazard and they're dangerous, but uh, maybe Bob Thorison can come up with an idea of replacing those granite crosswalk blocks with something else. They've really been. I have. I, I realize that. I realize that. John, what about uh, the brick Im imitation brick yeah. sidewalk? Well, that's what uh, the assistant mayor was mentioning. There is a stamp that looks yeah. like the uh, yeah. granite. Yeah. So yeah. We, we can investigate that. Yeah. Um, I don't think we have to call in Mr. Thornton, do you? No. No. Thank you. No. We can always replace the, kind of, uh, the uh, granite. We won't get rid of it. We can always put it back if we see that it's uh, it 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 other doesn't work. Well, I came down onto Market Street from the post office this morning in the woman's house, right at yeah. the North Church, coming across there by yeah. Eagle. You should see it down there. Right. Terrible. It's really bad. So. Uh, uh, anyways, no, if we could do something else, because this has been like that for years, years and years. Um, I think the city attorney will now tell us that now that we're aware of it's a hazard, and we put it now on publicly put it on television as a hazard, right. our failure to act would be uh, not very prudent. So and I, I would I, say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you all ready for the vote on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Um, is that it on uh, Alex? Uh, yep. Minutes? Okay, very good. Uh, all, uh, all in favor on the minutes, yeah, complete yeah, yeah. minutes. Uh, second? Do I have a second? Second. Yeah, no, well, we just we did, did it on yeah, number did. Three, five. No. No, no, just hold on. I just okay. questioned them. All right, yeah. okay, then, very good. Um, Alex, do you want to get out of here? Huh? Let's get out of here. Motion oh, let's get out of here. Your Honor, before there is a motion to adjourn, just want to remind council members that we do have a, a couple, we have a meeting, regular meeting on March 17th. This will be student government uh, counterparts will be here with you. On March 24th, we have the work session on the CIP, and we have another meeting, a regular meeting of the city council on March 31st. Okay? Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, does somebody want to make a motion to adjourn? I can, we ask that uh, John communicate with us as to when we're meeting with the students 
We usually go to the high school. Right. That would be the ninth. Uh, that would be, I believe, we will, that will be the 19th of March. Okay. At 9:30. Yeah. And then the kids are going to be on the 26th. The, the, the students will be on Thursday, March 27th. Mm -hmm. When do we go to the high school? The 19th. What time? 9:30 a.m. And it would really be nice if you counselors could come out for that. I have a be good yeah, because the kids really, you know, and they look forward to the counselors coming out. And, Your Honor, I will send out a notice to council members, just a reminder. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Department. All right. Well, who's going to make the motion to adjourn? I did, Your Honor. Okay. Okay. And I got a second. Did I get a second? Yeah. Okay. All in favor. Aye. Aye. <laughs> All opposed. Oh. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> 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 <laughs>